chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Senator Mark Warner. Senator, thanks so much for joining us during this extremely busy time. Uh, the Russians seem to have been taken by surprise by the strength of the Ukrainian resistance so far, but we've certainly seen satellite images of a large convoy of Russian military equipment heading toward Kyiv. From the intelligence that you've seen, how concerned are you that Putin could still use overwhelming force by the Russian military in order to take the capital? Well, two or three things. One, I think we have gotten Putin off his game because the American intelligence was so correct about both the extent of the invasion and uh, got rid of any ability for Putin to claim that this was generated by the Ukrainians, number one. Number two, um, the Russians clearly underestimated the resistance and will to fight by the Ukrainians. And President Zelensky has become a world figure in terms of um, standing up for his country. Number three, um, nine days ago, I was in Munich uh, meeting with a lot of our NATO allies. And while they thought the invasion might start, they were still unsure how far they'd go on sanctions. And we have now seen sanctions on Nord Stream 2. We've seen sanctions directly against Putin himself. We've seen sanctions on the World Bank. We've seen the SWIFT uh, financial system literally help kick the Russians out. At this point, five, six days in, uh, the Russians are reeling a little bit. But as your, point, as your question pointed out, Russians still have overwhelming force. About a third of their troops have not been fully deployed. Um, I'm very concerned in terms of the capabilities in the cyber domain. Uh, the level of cyber attacks that we've seen so far have been relatively mild. We are ratcheting up the pressure in a way that's unprecedented. The Ukrainians are fighting back, but the Russians over the long term still have an overwhelming military and cyber advantage. And negotiations between Ukrainian and Russian officials ended, of course, today with no ceasefire, but with plans to continue talking in the near future. In your view, is there a scenario where Putin can back down from this from this fight? And, and if not, how far do you think that he'll he'll try to take it? Well, that that's the question. Where is there an an off ramp for Putin? He's made unreasonable demands from the outset. Somehow saying um, Ukraine could never join NATO. Ukraine has to give up on its democracy. We're going to go back to the pre the late 1990s on the formation around Europe. That's just not going to happen. I think he knew that, but he's not found an, an exit uh, ramp. And frankly, the idea that the Ukrainians, after this kind of resistance, would somehow recognize the breakaway republics in the East, I think is, uh, I think the chances of that, that will be the Ukrainians' decision. But I think the, the chances of that are, are quite, quite small. So we also could see, and in reaction to these massive sanctions, the Russians try to launch cyber attacks against NATO or against um, the United States. And suddenly all of the hypotheticals of what could constitute an Article 5 violation could move from the realm of hypothetical to real. Article 5 is when you attack a NATO nation, and that then requires all 30 NATO nations um, to respond. So we're still in for some, some choppy days ahead. Uh, Ukrainian President Zelensky has been pleading for more military aid from the West. Uh, we know that help is on the way. But what more could and should the U.S. do in order to provide Ukraine with additional support? Well, listen, I am, I am amazed at uh, President Zelensky's resilience and the Ukrainian people's resilience. But we had been urging President Zelensky for weeks on end to go ahead and mobilize all of his reserves. He only did that three days or in, into the fight. Um, so are there ability to get more arms in over land? Yes, and the fact is, it's not just coming for our, from our forward deployed um, arms, but all of the other NATO nations. But the amount of arms that will get in um, is not gonna stop the Russians, uh, at least on the military, mil military front. But what I think Putin has to recognize is that even if he were able to defeat the Ukrainian military and take technical control of some of the larger cities in, in the center part and east of Ukraine, he's going to have an insurgency on his hands. All of these literally thousands of Ukrainian citizens who've been part of these territorial defense units, who've gotten weapons, um, they are not going to sit idly by even as as you, Russian troops try to patrol their cities. I mean, uh, the, the Russians do not have nearly enough forces around Ukraine at this point to occupy a country of 44 million people. You know, we'd have to imagine that Putin is an extremely calculated person, but do you think at all that he miscalculated this invasion? How much resistance that he would face from the West and, and the impact that sanctions would have on his country? 
I believe he totally miscalculated. I think he thought he was going to walk in the way he did with Crimea a few years back. I think, you know, he only sent about a third of his forces in initially. There was no kind of shock and awe. He has not used his full cyber capabilities, which, again, I have a grave concern about. Uh, and I think he expected the West to be splintered. And this is where I want to give President Biden credit. If we had acted arbitrarily or on our own, and I think that's what he expected uh, without European support, we would have split this alliance and he would be in much stronger position. This is also an indication, I believe, of a leader that has been autocratic for 20 years. He he doesn't like to hear dissent. And any of the images that your viewers have seen of Putin over these last few weeks, you know, he's sitting on one end of the table, totally removed. This is an isolated guy who doesn't like to have anybody but sycophants telling him you know, exactly the things he wants to hear. You don't make independent judgments um, with that kind of input. This is someone I think who has made a miscalculation, but he's also someone with enormous military power left, someone who's got um, huge amounts of cyber weapons to deploy and obviously nuclear weapons as well. Senator Mark Warner, we thank you so much for your time tonight.